Yeah, it's pretty cool that they have fur. A lot of them are growing some winter fur. Basically all except Rosa, so the second, the ones who have a bit more meat cow in them, they're growing a really thicker winter fur. Yeah. It's really obvious when you're up close, yeah. Yeah. So let's take a quick look at uh, how the fields have changed with giving them complete freedom to roam around. So we have various theories, competing theories, right? Uh, on the one hand, when they have full freedom to move around, they self-organize themselves and eat what they want at any given time. But uh, on the other hand, the supposed drawback is that they will leap things they don't like. They and will so, just eat their favorites, is the theory. Yeah. So then some of the grazers, uh, farmers who do this, they like to make them move through very small fields so that they eat everything and then they move to the next field. And at least this year we're trying to just see what happens if you let them be, right? Yeah. And what are your observations? Well, I would say that the only things they have completely left alone are the things that have like zero nutritional value. Like this? Like these dead stalks. I mean, these they left alone in the beginning. That They could have still eaten them if they would have liked them when they yeah. first moved in. Yeah. They were not brown when they first moved in in August. But this is not a preferred species. So they have left it alone and now it's it's completely brown. Mm -hmm. So I mean it supports... But everywhere else they seem to have eaten a lot and there is regrowth. Yeah exactly. So I think the plants they really don't like, they leave them and now they, it's, it's, they're wilted so they wouldn't mm -hmm. eat them anyway. But otherwise yeah they've eaten quite, quite nicely, quite a lot. And uh, it's still regrowing even though it's at a slower pace now. Yeah. But we still have these fresh green coming up so this is this hun keks and yeah. uh, this we have a lot of this dug copa always it's still growing coming strong this late mm -hmm. in the season yeah so um it's uh, all the friday the 13th grasses, of october of yeah and they all are quite uh, chubby yeah fat yeah so i think i would say now it seems that the food is maybe running a little bit low but I mean, they're they're still eating yeah. all the time, and also the green. mineral lick is still not very popular, much used. Yeah. yeah. So they are getting what they want from the selective grazing they're doing. Yeah. Oh. Oh, and the <laughs> black and white one was the only one who was too slow to get any barley. Okay. She feels like she missed out, maybe. Oh well. Yeah. Next well, time. Yeah. Cool, and then uh, the other observation we made is that maybe a, about a week or two they have started scattering themselves, right? And grazing yeah. all over instead of in yeah. tight herds, which they were doing for yeah. several weeks. They're still in a herd, I would say. I mean, they're yeah, spread They're largely out, in a herd, but then they're... This or a bit more, they're not all over the field but they yeah. they do have like 10 maybe 20 meters between themselves sometimes yeah which yeah. is a lot more than before yeah, yeah. so they seem to maybe i don't know become more comfortable with the pasture yeah yeah, yeah. so let's see what happens next year when we come back to this field where they've grazed and pooped wherever they wanted to which uh, I don't think it's completely random, but then we don't have a lot of data to to understand the dynamics. Yeah, but, I mean, they uh, have their walking paths yeah, and they, they poop a lot along paths. those. Yeah. Walk and poop seem to be a pattern. <laughs> yeah. Cool.